What's going on everyone? This is Jacob here. I hope you're having an amazing and productive day. Today I wanted to talk about my top three tips for building a trading bot. And at the end of the video, I'll be showing you how my bot did today, July 8th, and its performance for the day. Okay, so stay tuned at the end of the video for that. But anyways, on towards the top three tips for building a trading bot. So tip number one, your trading strategy should be really simple to explain. Okay, you should be able to tell someone your strategy and how it works in one or two sentences or a short paragraph. It shouldn't be super complex with, you know, a billion indicators, um, you know, a billion different price action candlesticks up and down doji candles. It should actually be very simple to explain. Now, how does that make sense? You know, most of us think, oh, the more complicated a strategy is, the better it's going to do, you know, with machine learning and regression, you know, using neural networks. That's actually not the case. The stock market has a lot of noise. Prices are going everywhere. Everyone in the world is trying to come up to a collective price of a certain asset based on, you know, news, fundamentals, technical uh, analysis. So there's a lot of noise in the market, right? And sometimes using, generally using a sophisticated algorithm or a sophisticated strategy that's over complex won't actually net you more returns and it might actually cause a bigger loss. Your strategy should be super simple. That way you can iterate over it over time very easily, okay? You can improve it easily by tweaking a couple parameters or uh, tweaking your you know base fundamental strategy. Generally, the more complex a strategy is too, you can overfit your results, okay? And what overfitting means is when you're testing your strategy, uh, back testing it in history, you might, you know, get too excited uh, when it does very well in history, but when you turn it, when you try it in real time, it just completely flops, okay? And this happens a lot, especially with complex strategies, because you've fitted your parameters uh, so well to that time frame that when it gets new data, it just flops, fails, and loses a lot of money. So when the strategy is simple, right, and you can explain it to someone, it's easier to uh, optimize for and test over a certain period of time with out of sample data. Remember in my previous video, guys, you generally want to take half of your back tested data, say six months, right? Optimize it for that and then try it in another six months worth of data without with the same parameters. That way you kind of know if your algorithm is strong or not. So once again, tip number one, keep it simple, right? Um, be if you're able to explain it to a friend and like I said, one or two sentences or a short paragraph, generally you're on the right track. Tip number two, your strategy should be scalable, right? You should be able to get similar results with say a $1,000 account versus a $100,000 account. It should be able to scale with your account size. Um, and sometimes strategies, you know, don't scale well based on quantity sizing or time of day it enters. Um, so it should be able to scale well with your account. Now, one way you can ensure that is factoring in slippage and commissions into your testing, okay? We all know what commissions is. Anytime you make a transaction on an exchange, you generally have to pay a fee in order to make that transaction. So you should take that into account when you're making these trades. That way you can factor that in and making sure that you're still profiting even after that commission, okay? And the other one, the other term that I mentioned is slippage. Slippage is generally the, the deviation or the change in which you might get filled at a certain price, right? Say you set a limit order for $1,000, right? And when you back test it, you always get filled at $1,000, for example. Uh, but in real time, you might submit that limit order and get filled a little bit, you know, higher, right? Because it's that order or lower. So you might actually get filled lower. And same thing when you do, say, market orders, um, you need to account for, all right, what's the percentage in which I might get filled at, right? It's never, Generally, it's never the exact price that you filled for. Um, so you need to account that kind of change and that deviation. So when you back test, you have a little bit of, you know, percent error, percent error in what you get filled at uh, and take that account when you're scaling your account. Because, you know, if you're trading with one share, it's not as much, but when you're trading with more shares, right, that slippage can mean quite a bit of money uh, in terms of being in the red and being down as well as that commission on top of that, you have to factor that in, right? So I'm not trying to down you guys with that. Uh, always factor in slippage and commission when you're doing your back tests and you always want to try and destroy your strategy, you know, try and kill it, right? Because if you can't kill it over a year's worth or two years worth of time, 
that means you're on the right track. It doesn't guarantee you have a profitable strategy, but you're on the right track and you can build on from there. Okay. So tip number two, make sure your strategy is scalable. And finally, tip number three is your strategy should be able to work with multiple different asset classes or financial instruments. I'm not saying it has to work with all of them, but if it can be profitable with, with at least two or three different ones, that would be great. So for example, say you've built a strategy and it works very well with the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. Now try and test that strategy with say another stock such as Apple or Tesla, uh, maybe some future indexes or Forex and see if any of them do well. Generally, when you're building strategies, if you, if you want to be somewhat successful, you need diversification. You need to be able to either run multiple different strategies simultaneously or trade multiple different asset classes and financial in, financial instruments at the same time to diversify your portfolio and making sure you know you're maximizing uh, your potential returns. OK, so build your strategy and try it with different asset classes. Generally, if you can be well with two or three, that's a pretty good sign that you're on the right track. Like I said, I never guarantee profits with this stuff, but if you're on the right track, you can build upon from that. OK, so that was my three tips. Now we're going to hop in and I'm going to show you how my bot did today, July 8th. It did bad. OK, we were able to break even and I finished with a twenty two dollar profit, but I was at a four hundred dollar loss at one point drawdown, meaning um, I was in a position and I was down four hundred dollars. Thankfully, the market rebounded and I was able to break even, uh, but it was a tough day. It was a really crappy day. And, um, you know, like I said, when building strategies, you know, it's all statistics. You have a mathematical chance of this and this when you backtest. Right. And I did have a chance of being at a massive drawdown. Thankfully, like I said, the market rebounded and I was able to take a small profit. But the risk to reward was not good. It wasn't great, guys. And um, definitely, you know, tomorrow's another day, but I do have work to do. I always have work to do on improving my strategy and making sure it can handle every different scenario. Today wasn't the best day, wasn't the best scenario, but we were able to end it somewhat green. And, um, you know, I've learned a couple things too with um, my back testing and real time results uh, in terms of slippage. So learn that for me. But like I said, I made $22 profit. Um, but it was it was a bad day. You know, at, at one point I was down over four hundred dollars and that's not great, right? Like being down four hundred and only making twenty two. That sucks, right? But the market's going to do what it's going to do. And you can only try and best. Uh, I wouldn't say predict the market, but best handle the market in the current condition. And, you know, like I said, right now I'm only running one strategy live. If I had multiple different strategies, you know, my risk would be more balanced. But right now, um, the risk is too high for my reward in most cases. So uh, I'm going to be, you know, tweaking my strategy and hopefully um, optimizing it so we don't have that high, such high of a risk. Anyway, so that's how my bot did today. Like I said, $22 profit, uh, but we were at a massive drawdown. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos where I keep you posted on how my bot did for the day, let me know in the comments below um, and let me know if these tips helped you if you're developing a strategy or you're thinking of uh, creating one. Um, let me know if they help you below in the comments below. I would really appreciate a subscribe and like if you found value and we will see you next week. Have a good one, guys.